Hey guys, it's Donna. Welcome, welcome back to my YouTube channel. First of all, I have tried to film this video so many times. I tried to film it yesterday. I tried to film it today, and I, it's it's been a little bit of a struggle. So bear with me if I'm seeming tired because I've been talking about this a lot. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing my February wrap up, which is me talking about all the books I read for the month of February. I'm not going to be telling you guys the synopsis of these books because I want you guys to get the same experience I did where I didn't know what I was reading, like I didn't know this, what the book was about when I picked it up. So I want you guys to have that same experience because it definitely brings a different perspective to the book when you don't know what it's about. I also don't have an actual physical copy of the books with me, so instead I'm just going to be inserting a picture right here of the actual book for you guys. So. I think that's it. Uh, let's just get on to the video. So I read a total of seven books this month, which is crazy for me because I never read that fast. So the first book I read this month was The Cheerleaders by Kara Thomas. I already have a full review for this book because I loved it so much, so you guys can check that out below. Um, but I'm just going to say for this video that it was amazing. It was a very Veronica Mars style mystery solving, and I totally recommend it. And I also really want more mystery books or mystery YA novels like that one because that was the best one I have read so far like nothing has topped that in my opinion and it's just so good so if you want to hear more of what I have to say for that link in the bio or link in the link in the description I'm so the next two books I read I actually read for my first Friday readathon which I'll also link below the vlog for that uh, I loved it so much. It was my first one, and I actually finished two books in a whole weekend. The first book I read was The Beginning of Everything by Robin Schneider. This book, I think I gave about three and three or three and a half stars um, out of five, because it just, it wasn't amazing. Like, I didn't love it. It was interesting. I was still getting interested in the story, but there were so many details or characters that I felt like we could have lived without and I didn't really understand where the story was going and when there was a plot twist it didn't really make sense um it was shocking but it didn't really, didn't really make sense so I didn't really feel connected to the story like there was so much going on I felt like it just really was not the most interesting and that's weird to say it's like an oxymoron like there's a lot going on but it wasn't much like I honestly I'm just gonna say it was pretty confusing and there's so many details that, and some of them we didn't even need and so I honestly just think I could have passed on reading this and could have lived without ever having read this book um but I mean that's, there were some points in the story where I was like ooh yes I'm loving it and some where I was just like mm -mm. the next book I read for the readathon was They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera which was like my favorite of the month oh my gosh it was so good. I think I gave this four and a half or five out of five stars uh, because I loved it so much. I loved the characters. I loved Adam Silvera's writing style and I loved the whole plot and the concept of the story and where it ended up going. I mean, it was sad at the ending, but it was still so good. And the journey go up to the ending was amazing. I loved it. And I loved our two main characters, Rufus and Mateo. I loved them so, so much. They're like my OTP now. I'm obsessed. I love them. And I'm not saying a lot since my OTP forever has been uh, Hazel Grace Lancaster and Augustus Waters from The Fallen My Stars, which you guys know is my all time favorite book. But this one, it comes in a close second. So the next book I read this month was The 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. Uh, you probably have heard about this book. Um, it's very intense and heavy and hard to read, um, and it's a very serious topic, too. There's so many layers and factors and so much going on and so many different topics that are so hard for people to hear about or read or just even know about. And uh, I honestly don't like how Jay Asher wrote this story. Um, I like that there's a book about all these different topics but I don't like how he went about representing them in his book um he did it in a very I feel like negative and harsh way that makes it very hard for people to 
understand the whole everything that was going on and there was like suicide rape um i think sexual assault it was a lot but it was it was a lot and i um i didn't i feel like i like ended up kind of finishing it like i finished it but it was like an e eh, kind of a finish where i was like just trying to get to the end um it was also very hard to differ between when um, Hannah's tapes are playing and when it's just Clay's narration because they're, they're different writing style, um, write fonts like one is italicized, one is just normal but because it's a book and it's like the page is weird color it's like really hard to tell um, which really annoyed me but I don't know, I, I wasn't a fan and I definitely won't be watching the TV show and I probably wouldn't recommend that one either this one, I think I gave, like, two stars. Um, the next book I read was One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus, which I had anticipated for a long time. It's, it had been on my CBR for a really long time. Um, but I never got around to reading it, and when I finally did, I was pretty disappointed because it was less than what I was anticipating. Um, I think part of it could be because I had anticipated it so much. It was a mystery, but it was one I could have passed on reading. And I honestly don't think I'll read another of Karen M. McManus's books just because I didn't like her writing style and I also didn't like how there were so many details we could have definitely left out or there was parts where I was just skimming and only reading part, like the dialogue or whatever because so many of the details that she put into the book were so unnecessary that it made it very hard to stay into the book. Um, I also didn't love any of the characters really. I only really liked Bronwyn and her sister and Nate. Like that was it. Uh, the next book I read this month was The Upside of Unrequited. Whew, that was hard to say. <laughs> so this is the book by Becky Albertalli and it was part of the Simonverse series, I guess. It's not the same exact, it's not the same world or story as um, Simon vs. the Hobo Sapiens Agenda is. Um, it's just, it's different characters, but all the stories like kind of overlap with a few of the characters. So this is about Abby's cousin, and Abby was Simon's friend in Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. And I tried reading this one a few years ago, and then I think I DNF'd it. And I was kind of shocked that I did. Uh, I really did enjoy the story though, because there's a lot different things going on in the story but it was all balanced out where it made it a really interesting story to read. And I loved the different representation of um, LGBTQ pride and different forms of mental health and just, it was such a fun story to read and it wasn't heavy, it wasn't badly represented. I love Becky Abutati's books. So this one I also enjoyed, of course. Um, I think she represents different things like that so well, like LGBTQ and all these different things. She represents so, so well. Also ended up reading some of it on audiobook for the first time. This is my first book I've ever read on audiobook. Um, I was reading during school sometimes when I couldn't be reading, but I had could like listen to something in school. So I listened to the book while doing work or something. And I love that. I love that I did that because when I couldn't be reading, I could still be making progress in the story, which I loved. And I loved the narration for the audiobook. It was really good. Um, it is on YouTube. I can link a playlist that I listened to um, down below for you guys. I think I gave it four and a half, four and a half or four out of five stars. Obviously, I'm kind of guessing on my review, my ratings for these books because I can't really remember. But if you click on any of the reviews, it'll show you what I rated it. The last book I read for the month of February was A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson, which I was really intrigued by and really looking forward to reading. And I saw it in my library and I picked it up the instant I saw it and loved it. I loved the, the whole mystery, like the what had happened was super interesting and the characters were really fun to read. Um, I loved, honestly, I think I loved every single one of the characters. Um, I don't think there was any that I didn't like. The ending was shocking. It was a little confusing because there was so much to the ending, but it was still a really good ending and I liked how it went because it was very unexpected 
unexpected, which I love endings like that. Now, I loved Pip, the main character who was solving the case. I loved her, and I'm excited to read Holly Jackson's second book, which has another one of Pip's mis um, mystery cases. So that was my February wrap-up, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope you guys end up reading some of these books. I definitely recommend uh, The Cheerleaders by Kaya Thomas. They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. And The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Abitali. And A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Let me know in the comments if you've already read these books and your reviews for them. Also, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And I always say this, but leave me some video suggestions you have for me down below. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Oh, my feet are, like, fell asleep. Oh, my God, my leg. <gasps>